All right, the phone's over. Um, as soon as we're done here, Monica is back. She will brief you. Uh, she's here. Um, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, or after Monica is done, there'll be a briefing hosted by the permanent mission of the Russian Federation on the presentation of World Youth Festival 2024, which will be held from the 1st to the 7th of March in Sochi in the Russian Federation. Um, the Secretary General is in Germany. Uh, he landed this morning in Munich, uh, where he will be attending and is attending the Munich Security Conference. A short while ago, at the invitation of the Munich Jewish community, he visited the Ohel Jacob Synagogue, which is part of the city's Jewish center. He made strong appeal there against anti-Semitism and once again called for the immediate release of all the hostages held in Gaza. Tomorrow, the Secretary General will deliver remarks during the Munich Security Conference's opening session. He will also take part in a panel discussions with heads of states and government, which will include Mia Motley, the Prime Minister of Barbados, uh, Nana Akufo Addo, the President of Ghana, Gustavo Petro Urego, the President of Colombia. Uh, you'll be able to watch this session live uh, on UN Web TV if you get up at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, on Friday, he will then, as we've told you, go on to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia to take part in the 37th Ordinary Session of the African Union Summit. On Sunday, he will arrive in Doha in Qatar for the follow-up meeting of special envoys from member states and regional organizations on Afghanistan that he's convening on the 18th and 19th of February. As we mentioned when we first announced the meeting, the objective is to discuss how to approach increasing international engagement uh, in a more coherent, coordinated, and structured manner, including through consideration of the recommendations of the independent assessment of Afghanistan. Uh, the Secretary General will be back in New York on the 20th of February, uh, and that is next Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Turning to Gaza and uh, the situation uh, there, the S Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tells us that intensified airstrikes on Rafah are further complicating the already fragile humanitarian operation there. We and our humanitarian partners continue to do the near impossible to assist people in need despite the risks. However, we need uh, basic safety conditions, roads to be open, trucks to be able to move, and supplies to get in um, uh, with staff capacity. We will continue to do everything we can to assist people, but with a potential escalation of fighting in Rafah, the conditions for civilians could be even worse than, we have, than they have been so far. Uh, even in these many weeks of the war in Gaza. Meanwhile, in, um, the so in south of Wadi Gaza, our partners are distributing food, blankets, mattresses to displace people in areas that we're able to access. And on the health front, uh, the World Health Organization said one of its key humanitarian partners in the International Medical Corps had in constructed a field hospital on the border between Khan Yunus and Rafah to help address the shortage of health care facilities. And on that uh, figure, you will have seen um, the reports of the situation in Nasser Medical Complex in Gaza, Dr. Tedros, the head of WHO, said today that he's alarmed of reports that of civilians killed, as well as orders to evacuate people seeking shelter at that uh, medical complex, adding that two WHO missions have been denied in the last four days, and that WHO has lost touch and contact with the hospital's personnel. Dr. Tedros said that hospitals must be safeguarded so they can serve their life-saving function. Uh, turning uh, north to Lebanon, um, I think Sylvian, who is not here, had asked about uh, Joanna Warwenka, the uh, special coordinator for Lebanon. She said today she's deeply concerned about the escalation of hostilities across and beyond the Blue Line, and adding that this is distressing to see a heavy toll in civilian lives and property. She called on all concerned uh, parties to stop this cycle of violence and urgently institute security measures along the blue line uh, towards a sustainable cessation of hostilities in line with Security Council Resolution 1701. She underscored that the tens of thousands of displaced people have a right to return and rebuild their lives in safety and that this requires a political solution to the conflict 
time is running out, she added. As we mentioned to you yesterday, our peacekeeping mission in, in uh, L Lebanon continues uh, to be fully engaged with all the parties to decrease tensions and continue to implement its uh, mandate. And on the humanitarian front in uh, Lebanon, civilians, uh, our humanitarian uh, uh, colleagues at OCHA stress that civilian infrastructure must be protected as of today. The escalating uh, hostilities in southern Lebanon have displaced more than 88,000 people. That's according to the International Organization for Migration. We and our partners continue to provide humanitarian assistance to those who have fled their homes, complementing the Lebanese uh, government-led initiative. This includes food, health care, cash assistance, education support, and legal protection services for displaced families, and support in maintaining water and wastewater treatment, which is very important. Meanwhile, OCHA estimates that some 60,000 people remain in border villages, which are highly impacted by the exchange of fire across uh, the Blue Line. Our ability to provide humanitarian assistance and support to these people is very limited due to security, access, and funding issues. Um, and an update on Mr. Lamamra, because I think some of you had asked me about Mr. Lamamra. Uh, I can tell you that the Secretary General's personal envoy to Sudan is leading our renewed engagements and working to strengthen multilateral coordination around political and mediation efforts, working in support of and in close partnerships with African and other regional and international partners at a time where deteriorating situation on the ground necessitates enhanced efforts to bring an end uh, to the current conflict. Mr. Lamamra has uh, undertaken an extensive diplomatic tour of key capitals in the Horn of Africa, in Europe, and in the Gulf uh, to engage with Sudanese regional and international stakeholders to enhance efforts to end the conflict and relaunch a credible political process. Mr. Lamamra is in Addis Ababa, where he will attend the African Union Summit and engage with relevant stakeholders on the margins of that summit. Um, moving, uh, just staying in the general area, and a uh, quick update on the situation in Abye, where our peacekeeping colleagues at the peacekeeping mission there, known as UNISFA, tell us they're continuing enhanced levels of patrolling as intercommunal communal tensions persist. Peacekeepers responded to gunfire between two groups yesterday. At the Rumamie, uh, in Rumamie, in southern Abye, two civilians were reportedly killed during the violence. The mission patrolled and maintained presence in the area to protect civilians. UNISFA is also continuing to engage with stakeholders to calm tensions, coordinate to provide longer-term security and voluntary return options to those displaced. And um, back here, but remaining on the African continent, Abdullahi Batili, the special representative for Libya, spoke to the Security Council this morning and said that 13 years after their revolution, Libyans are still waiting to realize their aspirations for sustainable peace and democracy. He said that key Libyans appeared that the key, excuse me. He said that key Libyans appear unwilling to resolve the outstanding political, uh, politically contested issues that would clear the path to long-awaited elections. Mr. Um, Batili has continued his engagement with those major players, appealing to their wisdom. So far, he said none of them have made a decisive move from their initial positions, with each continuing to articulate preconditions for their participation in the dialogue to maintain the status quo, which seems to suit them. This afternoon, the Council will reconvene for a briefing on threats to international peace and security caused by terrorist acts. Briefing will be the Under Secretary General for Counterterrorism, Vladimir Voronkov, as will Assistant Secretary General and Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Executive Committee, Natalia German, the both brief. We'll try to get those remarks to you beforehand. Uh, the meeting is on the um, 18th report of the Secretary General on the threats posed by Daesh uh, to uh, international peace and security and uh, the range of UN efforts in support member states to that threat. Uh, quick, some notes on Ukraine. Uh, today, our team in Ukraine, together with the World Bank, the European Commission, and the government of Ukraine, released a joint rapid damage and needs assessment. It shows that the recovery and reconstruction costs now stand at an estimated $486 billion over the next decade. 
That's up to $411 billion just a year ago. The assessment is the third since the war's escalation in 2022, highlighting housing, transport, commerce, industry, energy, and agriculture as the most impacted sectors. Approximately 2 million homes have been damaged or destroyed, impacting nearly 10% of all housing units in Ukraine, hindering rebuilding efforts. The study also indicates about 80 billion U.S. dollars in damages and loss in agriculture and $54 billion in revenue loss in the energy sector. Uh, and just an update of what's going on on the ground, our humanitarian colleagues in Ukraine tell us that reports of deadly attacks are continuing. Uh, they tell us that another wave of attacks across the country overnight and this morning resulted in civilian casualties and damage to civilian infrastructure. That took place in Kyiv, in Zaporizhzhia, and in the regions of Ivanko, uh, Frankivsk, uh, and Lviv, as reported by national authorities to us. Local authorities on the front lines in Donetsk, Kharkiv, and Kherson regions also reported additional civilian casualties and damage to vital civilian infrastructure resulting from uh, continued hostilities. Humanitarian workers on the ground are providing support, including plastic sheets and other supplies. Um, we've also seen reports of missile strikes on the Russian city of Belgorod. And we reiterate one more time that attacks against civilians and civilian infrastructure are prohibited under international humanitarian law and unacceptable and must stop immediately. Uh, just want to flag to you a new report by the ILO, Save the Children, UNICEF, show that globally 1.4 billion children from, day to, from the day they are born to the age of 15 lack any form of social protection, leaving them vulnerable to disease, poor nutrition, and poverty. More online. And we have a doozy of a quiz for you today. This latest fully paid up member state is a landlocked country lying between the Tian Shan and Pamir mountain ranges. Um, and this country's epic poem entitled the Epic of Manas is 20 times longer than Homer's Odyssey. Uh, and it goes to the heart of the spiritual and identity of the country. And it is also on UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage. What country are we talking about? What? Bhutan. Nope. Who said, uh, who said Kyrgyzstan? Kyrgyzstan. We thank our friends in Bishkek. Uh, 58 member states now paid in full. OK, I'm done. Uh, you yield. All right, well, Edie will take your question. Um, thank you, Steph. Actually, a couple of questions, no surprise. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment on the Israeli raid on Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunus, where one patient was killed, several others injured? Well, we echo uh, what Dr. Tedros said on this issue uh, and reiterate once again that hospitals uh, must be kept free of combat, must not be subject uh, to uh, any sort of, of military action. Uh, any, any type of military action on a hospital must be condemned. Um, secondly, um, does the Secretary General have any comment on reports that Russia is trying to create anti-satellite weapons? Um, on that, uh, I mean, we can't, you know, this media speculation that we're um, seeing, so we don't really have any substantive uh, information on it. Um, but obviously, as a matter of principle, the Secretary General continues to call on all member states to avoid um, an arms race in outer space, including the development of both legally binding, uh, legally binding and political uh, <coughs> measures. Um, and then when it comes to, member, to nuclear weapons, member states must abide by their treaty obligations and avoid any action that could lead to catastrophic miscalculation or escalation. Deji. Yeah, uh, two questions. First, uh, Secretary General is heading to Munich. Uh, we know that the, there would be delegations both from Israel and from Palestine. Uh, 
Uh, is there any plan for the Secretary General to meet both sides, or maybe they can have a trilateral? Uh, I will. Uh, we will let you know on any sort of uh, meetings the Secretary General has on the sidelines. And and another thing, uh, the Israeli media report reports reported that um, the ongoing negotiation on the ceasefire deal in Cairo is not going very well. The Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, said it, the, the yep. deal Hamas came out still is delusional. Um, what what does the Secretary General ha have to say on, on well, the I mean, latest the, the, development? The Secretary General hopes that all the parties involved will reach an uh, agreement that would lead to a humanitarian ceasefire and would also lead to the uh, uh, immediate and unconditional release of all the hostages. And on that note, is there any possibility that the Secretary General could talk to Mr. Netanyahu in the very short future? Uh, I, I think I've, that, as, as they would say in court, ask I'll be answer. the third to know, right? Okay. Amelie and then Evelyn. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, the Venezuela foreign minister just announced that uh, they decided to suspend the activities of the UN rights uh, office in Venezuela and order the, the staff to leave within 72 hours. Any comment? We, we, I literally just saw this as we were coming in. Uh, we, we're, we need to confirm the, the decision. We'll get back to you. Evelyn. Thank you, Stefan. <coughs> On the meeting in on Afghanistan, are any Afghan women going to come to it? Uh, as, we any said, women? Be, as we said, there will be a meeting between the envoys and civil society groups, which will, of course, include Afghan women. It is very important that the voices of Afghan women be heard in these discussions. Thank you. Gabriel. Thank you, Steph. Uh, Martin Griffiths gave an interview to Sky News in the last 24 hours where he said, among other things, and I quote, Hamas is not a terrorist group for us. As you know, it is a political movement. Does the Secretary General have any response to that? Uh, we, we've seen, uh, I mean, we've seen the interview, the, the, the reaction to, uh, to the interview. First of all, I would tell you that Martin Griffiths just posted, uh, posted a post on X. Uh, I think explaining uh, what what he was saying from the Secretary General's standpoint, uh, I think he and and many other senior UN officials, including Martin Griffiths, have unequivocally condemned uh, the abhorrent terrorist attack that Hamas conducted on October seventh, uh, and that there could be no justification for them. Uh, that position is unchanged, uh, as we've said the, the, the many times here, and the Secretary General himself not too long ago, uh, the designation for the United Nations, the designation of an entity um, as a terrorist group or a terrorist organization can only be made uh, by the Security Council. Uh, Don, then if to sum, then Stefano. Thanks, Steph. I wanted to follow up on SRSG's Patton's visit to Israel of two questions. Do you know if she's briefed the Secretary General yet? I don't think she has briefed the Secretary General for the good reason that her, as far as I know, her technical team, I think, just got back yesterday or the day before. So I think they have to sort through uh, the information uh, that they brought back with them, and then I have no doubt she will brief the Secretary General. And regarding the technical team, as I understand it, the the her mandate doesn't include investig. It's not investigative. That's correct. So who paid for the technical team? I mean, it came out of her budget, as far as I know. Uh, her, so uh, the budget of her office. Because it isn't clear who was on the technical yeah. team. I think Forensics. They may, have been, they may have been experts from different parts of of the UN. I mean, we could check uh, the. I can check the the purse, uh, but my understanding is that it all came out of her budget, her the budget of her office. So she, even though she doesn't have the power to investigate, she could have had investigative forensic people on well, her it's team. Well, I mean, I, I think there's different interp. If you're, uh, it's not a, If you're using the term investigative in in terms of the illegal criminal. Uh, a, a legal criminal context, that's not what it is. If you're talking about gathering of information by people who are experts in gathering inf that type of information, that's what she had. Uh, what did I say? I said it to some, then Stefano, then Maggie, then Linda. Thank you, Steph. Um, 
there is an, an Egyptian human rights organization called Sinai Foundation, and they published um, a report according to information they got that saying, um, that indicates that the construction work currently taking place in Eastern Sinai uh, is intended to create a high uh, security gated and isolated area near the border with Gaza Strip in a preparation for a reception of um, Palestinian refugees in the case of the mass exodus of uh, the citizens of Gaza Strip. Um, end of quote. So my question here, are you aware of that? I, uh, I, I personally had not seen that. I don't think I've not heard this being discussed in any of the meetings that I've been a party to, but uh, I'm happy to, uh, to check. <clears throat> but uh, our, our position on not being a party to any forced displacement of people remains uh, remains unchanged. Um, I lost my, I've lost my mind here. Stefano, yes, thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Yes, yes. <coughs> so, go ahead, Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, it's about um, Libya and what you just read yeah. about Batili. But it looks like uh, uh, the special envoy is stuck, more stuck than ever. He's no, I don't, I think it's fault, but he's, he's talking about that basically uh, from his speech that he, he thinks that these players have interests, personal interests, it looks like, uh, to maintain the status quo. So I, uh, my question is, what the Secretary General think about that? And especially is the, you know, sometimes envoys get stuck and need uh, help, what the Secretary General well, think I, to do? I think Mr. Batili's, as, as Mr. Batili's assessment was, I think, as um, clear and honest as we've seen uh, from a UN uh, envoy in, in calling out the intransigence of political uh, leaders. I think the, what, and Mr. Batili was speaking on behalf of the Secretary General. He was representing him. So, uh, uh, you know, the Secretary General's <coughs> viewpoint in this situation is, is one that he supplied to, to, to other situations where he's called on political leaders of countries that are in internal conflict to put aside their own personal um, benefits, their own personal uh, issues, and to work for the good of their people. Uh, the Libyan people have been suffering for a long, long time. Um, it is also incumbent of all those member states who have an influence on one or other of the parties to exercise that influence in a constructive way. And that's the message the Secretary General has been uh, passing both publicly and privately. Maggie. Um. You mentioned the field hospitals in Gaza. I'm wondering, have those replaced the medical evacuations? Because we haven't really heard anything lately on medical evacuations. There's been very little medical evacuations. Uh, I mean, WHO uh, said they had been denied a number of times from going to the Nasser hospital complex. Uh, these field hospitals are cannot replace the, the size and, and, and efficiency, in a sense, of of hospitals uh, that had been standing in Gaza that are op that were operating, uh, staffed with with medical doctors and and, and nurses and healthcare professionals, the, these field hospitals are really a, a band aid uh, for gaping wound. But I'm referring to the medical evacuations out of Rafa. Yeah, into I don't Egypt. think we. I've, I've not been. Re I have not been told of of, of them recently. Uh, let me go to uh, Linda, and then we'll go to the screen, then we'll come back for round two. <clears throat> Thank you, Steph. Uh, going back a little earlier, you mentioned that the Secretary General has condemned the October 7th uh, terrorist attack and that there's no justification. I know this has been said many times, but my question is this. Um, the U.S. and certain other countries believe that the Security Council should con also condemn the October 7th attack. And I was wondering if the SG has any view, I mean, I know he doesn't control the Security Council, but does he have any view of the importance of the, of the Security uh, Council condemning I mean, this attack? I let, mean, let's, let's look at it, on, on the, the, let's flip it around. 
I think the lack of unity of the council, the continued divisions of the council on this and many other issues is not good for the United Nations, is not good for peace and, uh, and not good for peace and security. And the Secretary General, is, as you said, has spoken very clearly on that matter. Uh, let me go to uh, Abdel Hamid, I think, has a question. Yes. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, I have a few questions. Can you hear me? Sir. Yes. Uh, Fakhri Abu Diab, a spokesperson for the neighborhood of Silwan near Jerusalem, his house was bulldozed this morning. A statement issued by the, uh, from the State Department and from also from Lord uh, Tariq Ahmed, which he used the word condemned. That is very unusual. Uh, do you have any statement on that? I mean, we've seen these reports. I think we, we condemn and will continue to condemn these uh, demolitions of, of homes. My second question, do you, in your evaluation, is Israel in violation of the provisional measures demanded by ICG? Uh, Abdel Hamid, uh, you're free to ask whatever question you ask, but I think you know my answer, that I, it is not for us to comment and to, to assess uh, on rulings made by the International uh, Court of Justice. We will let the judges and the court itself uh, make those assessments. Uh, My last question. Yes, sir. Uh, when Mr. Thor Winsland stood in this hall and we asked him why you didn't visit Gaza for the last four months, he said that he will be going back to uh, the area and he will visit Gaza. As far as you know, did he do that? Did he visit Gaza? Uh, no, uh, he has not. But I, I think it bears repeating what Tor Venislant said, is that he... Uh, there are a lot of senior UN officials in the region. They all have different responsibilities. Our, our, the critical issue right now is on the humanitarian front. Uh, that's why we've had Catherine Russell uh, go in. We've had Sigrid Kog going. We had Jamie McGoldrick uh, go in. We've had, uh, we had Volker Turk go in. We had Philippe Lazzarini going in and others because they're working on the issues that are going on now. Um, there will be a time for that Mr. Uh, Venislan thinks it is most useful for him to go uh, to Gaza, uh, but we also have to think of the capacity of our colleagues to be able to organize these visits, and right now the focus is on, on the humanitarian. Um, let's go to Mushfik, and then we'll go to Augusta. Thank you, Steph. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Nobel laureate Professor Muhammad Yunus told the reporters this morning that Bangladesh regime people seized all of his Grameen offices. And as you know, that government filed new charges against him. Is the Secretary General aware of his, precarious, his serious situation? We're very much aware. Uh, I'd have to you know, reiterate that um, Mr. Yunus has been a very much a valued partner of the United Nations through the years. Uh, he's been an advocate uh, for us, both in official and unofficial uh, capacity, uh, and supporting a uh, number of, 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 um, of initiatives surrounding the Millennium Development Goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, and our, our development work in uh, general. We are very concerned about the reports that we have seen uh, coming out uh, of Bangladesh on issues related to him. Uh, Augusta. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So just a couple of clarification questions on Venezuela. You said you still need to confirm the decision. So I, I mean, li li literally, uh, I, I saw the, the news as I was walking in. Uh, I'd have to, I, I'm not saying it didn't happen or it happened. I just personally need to confirm uh, what happened so I can react in a proper way and I don't have to retract myself five minutes later. So just another follow-up on that that you might be able to answer. So on, do you have any estimates of how many employees UN Human Rights has in Venezuela? I couldn't find that online. No, no, ma'am. Uh, someone must, and we will try to find that person and relay that information to you. Thank you. Deji, then Edie, and then we'll leave it to Monica. Okay, a spokesperson of 
uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's office, when answering questions, said on uh, uh, the question on two-state solution, he said, "Now is not the time to be speaking about gifts for the Palestinian people. Is two-state solution a gift?" The two-state solution remains the principal position of the Secretary General. Uh, it is. It remains for us the only ultimate pathway uh, to peace. The thing is, how how would the UN convey this message to Israeli government now? I, I think it has been conveyed. But they are not listening. I, I can only speak to those who convey. I don't. I can't speak for those who are hearing. Do you feel disappointed? They said uh, this. I mean, I, I, Deji, I, I think you understand how we feel about this situation as a whole. We've been talking about it every day. Uh, Edie. On a completely different continent, um, does the United Nations support the European Union and the United Kingdom um, who are calling for an investigation of allegations that Ethiopian soldiers massacred scores of civilians in the Amhara region last month. I mean, we, we think that any human rights violations need to be investigated. And I also need to check with our human rights colleagues because I think they had some activities in, in Ethiopia. Uh, thank you all. We need to leave it to Monica because we're running out of time. Thank you so much, Steph, and uh, good afternoon, everyone.